welcome back for a brand new Patreon Q&A video. All of these questions that we covered today come from particular patrons who are on a certain tier of the Patreon campaign. So if you're interested in sending in a question, I've got the link to the campaign in the description section of this video. Check it out, send in a question. Dewey's down here, he wants to come up. All right, let's do this. The first question today comes from Steven. Steven asks, what's your best experience on a red carpet? If we're talking about premieres and red carpets that I've attended, I've got to go with that Rogue One, a Star Wars story premiere because it was my first in LA. I had gone to a couple of smaller ones when I was living in New York City, but a Star Wars premiere was on a different level. And one of the things that stands out to me most about that is when I was first thinking about moving to LA, this was after the Force Awakens premiere, someone had mentioned to me, you know, if you move to LA, maybe you'll get to go to a premiere like that. And I didn't take it all that seriously, but I did have it in the back of my mind a little. And then it turns out a couple of months after moving to LA, I actually did get to attend a Star Wars premiere. So that'll always be a special one. Moving on to question number two now, this one comes from Evan. Evan wants to know, I've been thinking about villains a lot and how they're catalysts for growth in a hero. So I was wondering if there was any failure you had to deal with in your career or life that seemed devastating at the time, but then you learned a lot from and used those lessons to set up a later success. I would say one of the most devastating points of my career was very early on at the beginning when I was working at the show Real Talk. I've talked a little bit about Real Talk, but just in case you missed that video, it's a movie review show. It was hosted by Jeffrey Lyons and Allison Bales, and I used to watch it a lot before actually working there. So it was basically a dream job of mine. And then when I finally got there and started working with them, it was still a dream job because I loved it. I loved every second of it. And then all of a sudden the show was canceled and I was devastated. I didn't know if I was gonna crawl my way out of that hole because it was just in my head. I was still really young at the time. There were all these possibilities out there, but I loved that job so much. And I just remember thinking to myself, how am I gonna find a job where I love the people, what I'm doing, what I'm covering so much? It's never gonna happen. But soon after that show was taken away, I basically started doing all of that for myself, writing, reviewing, interviewing, 100% from my voice and really real talk i think created a great foundation for me but then by taking it away it just hurled me full force into building a name for myself in that same sense and if real talk hadn't been canceled who knows if i would be here today from the filmmaking side of it making child eater that was just one failure after the next, which I think is the nature, especially when you're first getting started of any filmmaking. And that's what makes filmmaking so special and interesting is that failures wind up leading to successes you never knew you could achieve at the beginning. And, you know, Child Eater, because it was my first feature, it was a, a major, major learning curve. And with every single setback, it was two steps forward. And still to this day, I'm so proud that we just jumped in and we finished a feature film. So that was just one incredible experience as well. It's not just about learning as a film producer. I also think that for me, at least, having behind the scenes experience and knowledge has really helped me as a film reporter and critic as well. To be honest though, overall, I'm pretty hard on myself. I don't like failing at anything. So. Typically, I do go through that period where if something doesn't work out, I get really, really bummed about it. But then thankfully, for the most part, I've been able to rise to the occasion and actually learn from that failure, which isn't an easy thing to do. And it's something that I need to make myself keep on my mind every single day in this business, in life in general. It's a challenge, but it's an important challenge, I think, to have on my mind and a challenge to try to meet. So I do that all the time. Thank you for the question, Evan. Next up is one from Ryan. Ryan asks, when will we have a big blockbuster movie, a movie coming out between May and August, winning Best Picture? Maybe this one isn't your standard blockbuster, but The Hurt Locker actually came out in June 2009. And then, of course, we did have Mad Max Fury Road becoming a nominee. And that movie was a summer movie in 2015. So I think there are some baby steps there. And to continue on that track of baby steps, thinking about 
certain superhero movies in particular recently, Wonder Woman may not have gone on to secure an Academy Award. It did get a lot of recognition from the guilds, though. And just in general, I feel like it was a hot topic of conversation all throughout award season. And that does make a difference. And then look at some of the others. Of course, we have Deadpool. Remember when we were talking about Deadpool possibly getting a screenplay nod? Yeah, it didn't pan out, but again, it did for the guilds. And then we have Logan that did get the nomination last year. But the point of name dropping all these projects is yes, we don't really get a lot of blockbusters scoring Academy Award nominations or wins for that matter. But the build that we're seeing here, I do think that's starting to change something where they will be more widely accepted and acknowledged when we're talking about award season. And this year in particular, Look at Black Panther. I do think that that movie is going to stay a topic of conversation during award season this year. And I most certainly am rooting for it to get some nods, but there is a build happening here. There's a build just in terms of the Academy, I think accepting some of these bigger blockbusters, but also we're seeing some high quality blockbusters too. And as much as I want to see a little of everything represented in the Academy Award nomination list, you do have to earn it. And I do think that some blockbuster superhero movies, comic book movies, you name it, I think they're earning that recognition right now. And we're going to wind up seeing more and more of that in the running in the future. Next question now comes from Michael and Michael writes, what do you want to see in Solo, a Star Wars Story sequel? Solo, a Star Wars Story is out now. Hopefully you guys have seen it, but just in case you haven't, I'm going to leave the spoiler bar at the bottom of the screen until I'm finished with this question. So just scroll ahead until it disappears if you don't want to hear the answer to this question. Jumping in, my knee-jerk reaction to reading this was, no, 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 I don't want any more of this. Because if you guys watched my review, you know I didn't love this one as much as some of the others. But when I really gave it some thought, the surprising thing that came to mind, because I was a little lukewarm on Amelia Clark's Kira, just because I didn't find the character all that interesting. But of course, if you've seen the movie, you know she does end up in an interesting spot. And I have always wanted to dig deeper into the criminal underworld in the Star Wars universe. And with someone like her, given her past, given her relationship with Han, I really would be curious to see her navigate that realm because she clearly has some loyalty to Han, but she also has that dark side that she wants to rise to the top of this criminal underworld. So I wouldn't mind digging deeper into her mind frame and exploring that as she continues to work for Crimson Dawn. We have one more question to hit today, and this one comes from Kavi. Kavi asks, what are some of your favorite usages of non-score music in film scenes? I love this question, and I have a list that can go on and on, but I'm gonna narrow it down to three choices right now. And the first one is an obvious one, and it's Back to the Future, Johnny Be Good. That scene is just such a blast. And like many scenes in that movie, proves to me at least that Michael J. Fox was so pitch perfect in that role. I know he's got to get up on that stage for a reason, but there's something about that moment that kind of represents that feeling of any high school kid out there wanting to kind of live the dream and get up on stage and wow the crowd like that. So I've always really loved that scene. Moving on to another example is you're the best in Karate Kid. As some of you know, I have recently done the Cobra Kai binge watch and I love the show. I love the show, went back and rewatched the movie. One of the greatest things about Cobra Kai, and it's something that I think pretty much every movie or TV show that's a revival of sorts or just adding any sequel to a franchise should keep in mind is that when I watch Cobra Kai, now I go back and watch the original movie and I see certain things in different ways and I just love how it builds on that brand and the franchise. And anyway, getting back to You're the Best, one of my favorite ways that pop culture music is used in movies is when you could hear that song anywhere else out of context of the movie and it immediately transports you back to the movie, back to that specific scene, and that is exactly what You're the Best does to me. Just to add in a more recent example now, of course I've got to go with Thor Ragnarok, an immigrant song. It was used to great effect in the film's promotional campaign, and then when it actually pops up in the movie, oh, it is just right on point, adds so much fun and energy, and really heightens the comedic tone of that opening sequence. I love it. Kavi, thank you so much for this question. Everybody who submitted a question, thanks. I love the variety here. 
Thank you to everybody watching. Just a reminder, if you want to send a question, that link to the Patreon campaign is right here at the bottom of the screen. So go check it out. Thank you again for watching this video. Please like and share, and I'll see you soon with more reviews, Q&As, vlogs, you name it. Thank you.